How's it going guys? So in this quick tip, I'm going to show you a really easy way to get custom textures to be used in Blender or any other 3D modeling software. So there's this free piece of software called Shoebox that has apparently existed for a really long time, but I just found out about it recently. Had I known about this piece of software earlier, it would have made my life a lot easier. So I'm definitely not the only person to be making a tutorial about this, but I want to do my part in sharing this knowledge for those of you who are like me and don't know that this exists. So first things first, in order to download Shoebox, you're going to need Adobe Air, which is no longer in development by Adobe, but I'll put the links that you need to follow to download Adobe Air for Windows, as well as Shoebox in the description below. So when you open Shoebox, you're going to see this little window here, and it has a couple of different tabs. The one you're going to want to go to is Bitmaps, and you're going to see Texture Ripper. So the way this works is you bring in an image, and you can basically extract textures from that image. You can either copy the image and then click on Texture Ripper, or you can just drag the image in. So I have some stock images here from the internet, this building for example, and let's just say I want to use this as a texture. Now obviously this is shot with perspective, so making this flat to use as, as a texture would not be something that's easy to do otherwise, but with Texture Ripper it's really simple. So real quick to navigate, it's extremely simple, you just scroll to zoom in and then middle mouse click to pan around. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to left click to add a point and we're going to try to match it up with the lines of the image. And you're going to see this grid appear. So I'm going to middle mouse click, go up here to the top, try to keep it straight with this edge line. Go over here to the left side. Click. And then you're going to see it start to flatten the texture over here in the left hand side. Now this is a high resolution image and I'm selecting a big portion of it, so this is gonna take a little bit longer than usual. And just like that, we have a flat image texture from this image, which is almost like magic. If it doesn't look quite right, you can go back in and you can move these points around to try and get a better result, and it will resolve each time you move the points. But once you're happy with what you have, you can just hit Save Texture, pick the path, and save your texture. Now inside of Blender, you can just import image as plain, open your image, and now it's inside of Blender and you can start using it to model and make a building easy as can be. Pretty amazing. So there's some other things about Texture Ripper I wanna talk about real quick. So first off, if you're in the middle of doing something in Texture Ripper, and at any point you right click, it's just gonna close it. So keep that in mind or you might end up getting really frustrated. Another cool thing that Texture Ripper does is it allows you to make multiple different selections and it saves it all into one texture atlas. So for example, let's say I like this window. I can extract the texture from that. And you're going to see it's a little messy at the moment. I'm not too concerned with having it perfect. I'm just trying to demonstrate this point real quickly. And then let's say I want this door as well. And just like that, we have those both in one texture, which is pretty amazing. Now it's gonna maintain the resolution of your selection. So obviously the higher resolution your image, the better. In this case, you can see that this door is super low res. And then one final thing. So the more angled the object that you wanna get a texture from is, the less likely it'll work perfectly based on your selection. But there are a couple of things you can do. So for example, I'm gonna to try to get this garage door here. And you can see that it's not the right aspect ratio at all. It's really thin over here and tall, which is not accurate, but you can actually adjust the resolution and aspect ratio in this window here. So if I grab one of these points, I can do something like this. It is a bit of a guessing game at this point, but in some cases it will work like this one. But yeah, that's really all there is to this video. It's as simple as that. I know it's a quick one, but I just wanted to share it for those of you who are like me and didn't know this exists. I hope this makes your life a lot easier when it comes to, uh, getting your own custom textures. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please slap a like on it. And to see future videos from me, please consider subscribing. I wish you all the best of luck with your projects.